Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at our Dyson vacuum cleaner. Uh, my uh, wife told me it wasn't working as well and asked me to take a look at it this weekend. So I told her I'd uh, take over the kitchen for a little while and see what I can do about fixing it. So I already took the um, uh, dust container, the hopper and everything off. I took that all apart, washed it, got a new filter um, that's drying now. So in the meantime, I'm going to go through and make sure the uh, vacuum um, path is open. You can see there's a bunch of hair and stuff on the beater bar. I'm going to take that off and just mostly make sure everything's good. So the first thing I want to do is make sure there's no debris up inside. So I'm going to remove the beater bar section. It's actually pretty easy on this one. You uh, just go to this little red clip and it'll slide out. It flexes a little bit and then it'll pop past with those clips. And then it should just pop apart like that. And then, yeah, there's a bunch of twine in there and stuff. It unplugs. That's actually kind of a neat design. So as it pivots, uh, instead of using a slip ring, it just pivots on the uh, on that point. So, yeah, I can see a bunch of crud in here. This has all got to get cleaned out. I'm going to move the motor end off the counter for a moment. And we'll just work on this section. So there's, uh, there's instructions on fixing or, you know, maintaining these in the Dyson manual, I imagine. But, come on now. We don't need manuals. At least not yet. Because if it's well designed, I should be able to figure it out. And so far, it's proving right. Those two tabs flip over. That unlocks it. This piece comes off and exposes all sorts of... Wow. I guess I need to do this more than once every year and a half or so. Trying to think how long we've had this. I don't think I've ever done this since I've owned it. Well, so there's crud underneath. So can I pop this off? Yep, I sure can. Now, as much as I want to think that Dyson stuff is a bunch of marketing baloney, um, I know I'm not totally off on that, but I have to say I'm pretty impressed with the uh, build quality and design so far. All right, that should... I don't want to take it all the way apart. There's a, uh, a bellows in there that I don't want to have to either re-glue or reseat, so... I'm just going to get all that loose crud out. Might even wash this. Alright, let me put that in the trash can. Okay, so this is pretty clogged in there. It's, uh, wow, yeah. So this thing probably hasn't been vacuuming all that well for a while. I mean, the, the thing would fill up, so something was getting in there, but it'll probably work way better now. All right. Now let's see. I'm sure there's a, is there a fancy way to get the beater bar out. No. I almost want to put all this stuff in the dishwasher, at least the uh, plastic bits, but I think I will just clean it as is because there is a, an electric motor in there and I really don't want to submerge that in water. That would be bad. So instead,
looks like there's stuff underneath the uh, belt drive housing. Wasn't planning on removing these guys, but maybe I should. Let's see, can I? Yeah. Hopefully, I only have to take two out. Know what's up with the uh, with this thing yet? Let's see. Mm, no, I wish it were that easy. Instead, what we got in there torques. Let's do it. If we're going to do it, let's do it right. Looks like it might just be those two. Of course it fell behind, but that's okay. There it is. All right, so. Well, there's how the uh, extra wire is dealt with. That's pretty good. Hmm. Again, I was trying to do the minimal amount of screws, but it doesn't look like that's an option. There we go. So you push in on the one. I really didn't push in on it. I guess it was just kind of stuck. Okay. So that's kind of cool. Good to know. So you just take the ends out. And then just need to give it a little pull. Like that. Just pops off. Now I can get all the extra hair and lint and string out from behind the motor. Yeah, looks like I'm going to have to get that open. If I separate the motor from this, then I will at least hand wash the plastic.
There we go. There's the motor. So I guess unless there's something I'm totally missing, all the screws do have to come out. And they're different lengths, so you got to keep that in mind. Good thing I kept them separated in their little holders. Hmm. This is good to know. So I may not have had to take that motor apart. Let's see. Yep, that cap pops off. And then that all comes off. That's what I was trying to get to. All right, that's fine. Going to put those other screws back in. And then uh, I'll deal with cleaning up the bottom the rest of the way. All right, so for future reference, and um, hopefully I'll remember to put a little annotation at the beginning of this. Do not, oh, I got these screws wrong. Do not take out the uh, 
T15 screws. I don't think. Take out the small ones. Just the ones on the end that are Phillips, which makes sense. So they made the user serviceable screws Phillips. And the, uh, not, you know, the service screws, I guess. The ones that I didn't need to take out that I took out. short screw goes there. For some reason in my head uh, I thought it was the upper right, but I was wrong. I was mistaken. Alright, so now I did have to take out these uh, T10s inside the hubs because of having crud wrapped around the uh, spindle portion, but there we go. You may not have to do that. back on. Don't need that off either. But it was fun to take apart and see that little motor. probably save myself a ton of grief not taking those gears apart or whatever this drive mechanism is all right they're both off I pulled the crud off the one side let's get this side yep got it Some devices, a little bit of dust is inevitable. Wash this out with water, but let's be realistic. I'm not selling it. If I were selling this, I'd probably go a little nuts with the cleaning, but all I'm going to do after I finish this is put it back together and vacuum the uh, you know the various rooms in the house so it's just going to be full of dust and cat hair and people hair again so we'll just get the loose bits hubs back on. Now again, like I said, you may not need to remove the hubs on yours, but if it makes like a squeaking noise when the beater bar is on, or I know it's just kind of a, I don't know, just a hot, a hot smell. So... That's what kind of got me to get start here. And also it's just good maintenance. You know, the Dysons are not inexpensive vacuums. So, 
I think putting some effort into maintaining them is a reasonable thing to do. I'll be sure to uh, do this much more often. Just make sure these heater bars are clean. Get all the, the hair and string and whatnot off. Just get all that. Is it getting in the ends? Looks like they try to prevent that, that lip, but you know, before, um, before I put it back in, let me pop the end off the short one. I can pop it off, I'll just loosen that screw. Oh. That is on a bearing? Yeah, I guess so. Alright, well, you know, I'm not going to pop that off. It seems like it's sealed in there. So, I'm going to take it for granted. There's no hair up inside there. I mean, it, it feels good. All right, so. Let's see. Oh, wow, well, okay. I mix the sides up. These are keyed to be specific per side. Anybody that works on Dyson is probably laughing at me right now. But the, uh, the lobes on those pieces are different. didn't get it seated properly no all right it's gonna say that's a little little much all right I just have to get that straight I just didn't have it straight I guess facing the right way. Yeah, all right, so I just didn't give it enough of a shove. Okay, and then let's give this one another slice with the uh, razor. And last little remnants of hair off. Then the pieces that are stuck in the bristles, I'm just going to cut them so that hopefully when the vacuum runs, it'll you know, pull them inside. All right. Then this side, same thing. Come on. Okay, so I found there is a little key. There's the lobes. One lobe has that little key on it that lines up with that notch. Like that. 
there. So let's get the Phillips. So the Phillips are the only ones you need to take out on the ends. So I expect this thing to run much better after I finish doing all this cleaning. I know it doesn't look look clean. You know, it's got dust all over it and stray bits of old hair and whatnot, but like I said, there's a certain amount of crud which you kind of, you need to accept, depending on the device. It's a vacuum, it's not a show car. You know, they do make it pretty, but it's a vacuum. it again so let's set it back in and get these these little hooks where they need to be which I guess kind of happens on their own let's gotta have those out or towards that way and then lock now this is ready to go I'm going to let me dump this off. I'll be right back. All right. So the beater bar is clean. I'm just going to touch this up a little bit. I'm not going to go nuts. The, uh, the filter does a really good job. So most of the dirt is just going to come up through here. The uh, clean out down here looked fine. Just kind of wiping the rubber off so it maintains a good seal and the plastic surface. I'm not going to open the ball up. No reason for that. Like I said, we're just maintaining it, not repairing it yet. Now they are saying I need to change a filter, but I'm assuming that's the filter inside the uh, the upper part. I'm reminding you. Change the litter. Yep. Got to change the litter. Mm. I'm reminding you. Change the litter. Well, now again, I feel silly. I didn't need to pull that off. Actually, I'm going to leave it off now because I pulled it apart unnecessarily. So it looks like you can take the ball apart. Just unscrewing these strange spring-loaded end caps. I think that's, does the whole wheel come off? Oh yeah, okay. Oh, and there's a filter. They use a lot of color coding, which is very smart. The uh, design engineers at Dyson, man, you guys are good. If uh, any guys ever watch my channel, your marketing wank is top notch, but your engineering is not too far behind. I gotta say, that's pretty clever. And then you can see this. I'm gonna have. 
have to order one of these unless I can clean it. But this just looks like it turns. Yeah. Maybe. Look a little bit. Ah, there we go. Wow. That's um, it's impressive. A lot of filtration going on here. So, oh, what do we have here? Turn it, clean it, tap it, let it sit in the sun, put it back in. So it's a reusable, cleanable filter. That's cool. All right, so we'll do what it says. to get one anyway. Obviously not putting it right back on. I'm gonna let it dry, and uh, we'll put it back on tomorrow. So I guess this will be a two-part video. Um, yeah, actually no, it's gonna be a single part. You know how it goes back on. Just uh, it's wet, but you know you just put it on and turn it, and it locks. Just like it comes off. But I wanted to make sure this was all clean in here, and it looks pretty darn good. So what we will do in this video, the only video, is we'll reattach the beater bar assembly. So you see how that goes? Let me just make sure there's no... See? That's, that bugs me. Alright. Uh, I wonder if this is a mistake. guys in a better spot. I'm going to try and take this wheel off because it's rubbing on something, on a bad bearing or something in there. So let's see. Does this pop out? It sure feels like it should pop out. Okay, so it does, it turns and then pops up. And then this looks like the screw on the other side. Oh, need light, come on light. There we go. So, two points. Try these needle nose, see if that does it. Yeah, that feels like it'll do it. Yeah, there's like a there's a nut with a spring clip holding it into the plastic. So it's a neat. It's a very service friendly design. There we go, and that pops off. Alright, so it's not the bearing making the noise. It's 
probably crud in here because I am seeing crud. Let's see if we see any rub marks. Oh, I see what's going on. Do you guys see that? No, you can't because I don't have it in the frame. See the bearing? See if I can pop that out, that whole thing. It feels like it should just. Might just be able to get all the crud off too. Mm. All right, so let's get that bearing clean. Pardon me. Yeah, that's a lot better. All right, so. Much better. And then do the other one. And I did rotate them. I'm gonna put the uh, right one on the left and the left one on the right. Then they'll do the hokey pokey and spin themselves around and all that stuff. I think that bearing, that thing might be shot. I might have to get a bearing. I'm trying to think if I have any little, little ones like that. I don't think I do. I'm going to go look. Be right back. Well, I don't have any tiny bearings, so instead I will use um, some lanolin spray and we'll just get some lubricant in there. see how this stuff does it's got to soften up its roll a little bit I think some crud got inside the race I don't want to use too much of the stuff in there because dirt's just gonna stick to it so just trying to get it inside that's actually kind of nice extra two. All right. I think we can work with that. All right. We're going to mess with this stuff. Yeah, you can see that ring in there where it was dragging on that. I'm going to try and clean that off. Just a little dribble of alcohol. Probably hit it with a scotch bread or something. Because that's really in there. back on. Just give it a little de-dusting. Now 
file tip, the nylon portion. Should print a little tool for taking that off. Just a little spanner of sorts. All right. Oh God. the other side on and see what that sounds like. Because holy <laughs> it's just that bearing rolling on the uh, on the, um, the plastic here. Here's my question. Got to get some uh, some new bearings. I do have one idea. I don't. I doubt it'll work, but I might try it. I'm gonna go and scotch bright this inside. I'll be right back. Okay, so I uh, I don't know if you can see that, but I hit this with the torch because I was worried there might be some hair. So figured it would burn it out. And the other weird bits, you can hear it sizzle. And it sure smelled like hair when I burned it. So, and I just hit it quick. Not a, I didn't really want to impart too much heat to it. I'm just trying to get it running smooth any way I can. That definitely seemed to help. So now, we'll get a little bit of that fluid film. Hopefully we'll now seep in there nice and warm. Still going to order new bearings, but that might be long. That might be good enough to get me a bit. And then I just kind of cleaned up the inside of that with a uh, Scotch Brite. I need to wipe out the inside. I was thinking about even trying some acetone, just gently. But let's see. First. Still think it's going to make a lot of noise. much of a difference. That's fine. I'll order some bearings and then uh, I'll switch them out. There we go. All right, so I'll make a little bit of space and then we will get the beater bar reinstalled and we'll call it a day. So now I got the beater bar. I'm 
got to make sure this lines up. So we'll line that up here. And then uh, I think I have to slide that clip up from the bottom. So let's see. That goes in. That's good. Yeah, it's actually going to be easier to put the clip on from the bottom with it this way because the uh, weight will hold it there. Now this is the direction. You see the bump goes towards the ball. And then just slide it up, paying attention to the grooves. You'll hear it click, and that's it. Now that's, uh, that's back in place. Just gonna wipe that down. Wipe that off, just kind of wipe it on down. But I do know the, uh, the ball is still gonna make noise when it rolls until I get those new bearings. Unless, you know, I wonder if I could put some, something on the inside, like, uh, I don't know, like a rubber or, you know, maybe some gaff tape or something. Just something to give it a little bit of a surface to run on instead of right on the plastic, because even new bearings might be loud. You know, like a tire, basically, but an inner tire on the surface instead of on the bearing. So, anyway, you get the idea. So, uh, you know, if you have any questions that pertain to what I did here, let me know. Put them in the comments. If uh, you don't subscribe, think about subscribing. As always, thank you for watching.